I fell into the trap. Hey guys, how are we doing? It's Martin Cliff here. Welcome to another Baby Steps Towards Minimalism. I think I'm gonna stop numbering these just because it's getting to be a silly number. I think this is 15 or something like that. And they're not really terribly sequential in terms of the, the, the way that they go. So, you know, there will still be an episode roughly every week. Um, but it's not going to be a you know, numeric sequence anymore. I think that seems like a sensible approach. But I've kind of had a realization that I've fallen into the trap of the consumer minimalist approach, which is a completely crazy thing that should never exist. Um, where I realized that I'd been doing what so many of us do, which is buying books on minimalism. So you have the magic the life-changing magic of tidying, Marie Kondo, possibly the most famous book, the Japanese art of tidying, um, which I'm sure is very good. I haven't read it, I will read at some point. Um, you'll spot a pattern here. Then I have The More of Less by Joshua Becker. Now, I love Joshua Becker. I think his videos are great. His talks that he's given um, at Journey Church and other things the interviews he's done on Break the Twitch and all, yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. But again, you know, it, it, it's a book, it's more stuff. Um, and I had pre-ordered, uh, but it never came through because Amazon UK are occasionally useless. Uh, his new book, The Minimalist Home, which came out at the start of this year. Um, I've actually cancelled that order because I came to this realisation that I was buying books about something about not having stuff, which seemed a bit crazy. Uh, and the reviews on Amazon, to be honest, were not great. Um, so I, I say I've, I've cancelled the order just because it's not that I don't support Joshua Becker. I think that he, he's, a, you know, as I say, he's a good guy and he's got his head screwed on right and his approach to minimalism in a rational minimalism sense is a very good thing. I just don't need another book on the topic. Uh, and then I have The Joy of Less by Francine J. Um, a minimalist guide to declutter, organize, and simplify. Uh, again, it was something that came out was supposed, supposed to be a good book. I haven't read it. Spotting a pattern developing. And then I have all three books by the minimalists. So Minimalism, Live a Meaningful Life, Essential Essays by the Minimalists. Everything That Remains, a memoir by the minimalists. Now, I'm looking forward to, to reading these. I haven't read any of those either. Um, again, pattern. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I like the way they, they present themselves and obviously uh, their, their film um, that, that Matt Devella uh, produced for them has certainly helped to stimulate the minimalist movement uh, across the world, really. Um, yeah, I, I think in their podcast uh, I listen to most weeks and is generally very good. Um, I don't necessarily agree with everything they say in it, but yeah, there there is yeah there there is good stuff out there. But that is what six books that I've bought added to my bookshelf um, at a time when I'm supposedly minimizing and decluttering. So I've fallen into the trap. And as I said, I'm not saying there's anything vindictive about the approach they're taking. I, I don't think that at all. But there is this this thing of people who are making money out of a concept that's about having less by encouraging you to buy more. Um, and that makes me a little, little uncomfortable, particularly as I've talked about at, at length in my situation where it's hard enough for me to get rid of stuff because I need to keep stuff. Again, it's all too easy for me and I suspect for many other people to think okay I want to go down this route so I need to equip myself with physical resources to help me unequip myself from physical resources and and it's a bit of a bit of a vicious circle so as I, I don't think there is anything vindictive or intentionally tricky about any of these books uh, or their authors by any means um, you know, and they absolutely have as much rights to make a living um, doing you know, whatever it is that they're doing as, as anybody else. But yeah, it's just a, a, a trap that um, 
that I feel I have fallen into where I've seen, and it's not the first time this has happened, but I've seen something that I've become passionate about, so I have wanted to buy books about it. Now you could argue, well, why didn't you get the Kindle versions or you know audio books or whatever? And I'm going to touch on digital minimalism in another um, another topic, another week. But and that is a whole abstract concept. Um, but to be honest, a I like physical books. Uh, I tend to read mostly when I'm travelling, so I will be taking probably one of the minimalist paperback books. Uh, next week when I'm off to Da Nang in Vietnam for a few days because it's lightweight, it's something that I can conveniently read on the beach. Um, yeah, so, and having a device like a Kindle or having something on my iPad, it's not the same tactile sense and also it's just not as convenient because I then need to make sure the device is charged, which if you're traveling abroad isn't always easy because of different sockets and all that kind of thing. Um, if you're in somewhere where there's bright sunlight then you know you can't necessarily see the screen very clearly and the, you know the Kindle always advertises the fact oh it lasts for 40 days yeah but it lasts for 40 days if you only read an hour a day what happens if I want to read four five six hours if I'm on a long train journey or I'm on a flight or something like that then that number comes drastically down so I, I'm not in favor of, of e-readers um, I am for magazines. I get magazines on my iPad now. Uh, the only magazine that I actually read is Sound on Sound magazine, and I've actually cancelled my subscription to that, uh, which expires, I think, in October. Again, all a digital minimalism process, journey, whatever. Um, I'm going to talk about digital minimalism at another time, but I think you know, reducing the amount of input and things going on that, that you have in your life in any context whether it's physical or, or you know, digital or electronic notifications and all that kind of stuff is all actually beneficial to living more intentionally which is the goal at the end of the day at least for me yeah, i'm never set out to be a the internet's version of a minimalist um, I set out to share my journey in reducing the amount of excess, the amount of clutter, because personally for me it has a negative impact on my mental health and that is more important than having X number of Y. So to flip this around on a positive note, I thought I would share about a couple of books that I bought fairly recently that have a more positive spin on, on, on things and in a sense still typify this kind of minimal aesthetic um, but in a, in a different way. Now I, as you may be able to tell by looking at me, um, ethnically Nordic, uh, shall we say. The exact ins and outs of my um, history are a little complicated. At least some of my family comes from Norway in the past um, so and, and that is a culture and a lifestyle, a Nordic Scandinavian lifestyle that is something that, that resonates with me. So when I was in Copenhagen in the summer I saw in a bookshop a uh, little, little book of Hugger. Uh, again a really famous best-selling book by the wonderfully named Mike Viking. It's spelt uh, Meek Viking uh, but he's a guy who studies happiness and this is the Danish way to live well. It's a really good book. Um, it's got lots of lovely pictures in it. It's got lots of lovely ideas about living more a more cozy life. Huggy, uh, uh, hugger essentially means coziness uh, and warmth and together and that kind of feeling that you get when you're on a cold winter's night, wrapped in a blanket by a fire, surrounded by candles, and chatting to your close friends and family. Um, it's so definitely a more positive thing than just decluttering stuff is living better uh, and having less clutter around is definitely something that goes towards that. Um, so then I, I follow that up with his, I think it's his second book, uh, which is The Little Book of Liquor. Now this is about happiness. So this is the secrets of the world's happiness, uh, happiest people. 
And this is not specifically Scandinavian. This is looking at happiness from a different approach from different people in the world. I was reading um, an article just today that um, was talking about how Bhutan is a country that measures wellness and you know, how well the country is doing, not on GDP, but on the overall happiness, uh, the average happiness of its people, which I think is, is wonderful, it is a great thing. And then, because I love coffee, and I'm not a millennial hipster kind of crazy funny shaped glass things and pour over and all that kind of thing, I just enjoy drinking coffee. Um, I got this, this was a Christmas present from my parents, um, the Little Book of Fika, which is one of the smallest books I own, uh, but it's the uplifting daily ritual of the Swedish coffee break by Linda Balslev. Um, and it's about stopping, essentially. It's about pausing life, getting together with people to socialize, to have a cup of coffee and maybe a pastry or a cake or something with them once or twice a day and just chilling out for half an hour and engaging in a one-on-one -on -one personal interaction and that is awesome the book itself is is fairly um, superficial uh, it's a very easy read it's the sort of thing you can throw in your bag and i read about half of it in in the airport at heathrow um, but it's just a very positive uh, uplifting thing about a positive and uplifting thing again not minimalist per se and finally, um, this book is a much bigger book and it's something that's taking up a lot of space on my shelf. Well, an inch. Um, the slightly strangely titled Nerf, because it's an O which is crossed out, which is an er sound. How to Live Scandinavian by Bronte Orel. And this is a combination of recipe book aesthetic guide it does talk about hygge, um just generally the benefits of living in that kind of environment which i very much strive for and would move to scandinavia in a heartbeat and we'll see where life takes us next um, but again a very very positive book that it isn't talking specifically about anything minimalist but it's talking about focusing on the right things uh, and things that bring you joy, which surely is what minimalism is all about. Food for thought. Anyway, thanks for watching and listening to me ramble, guys. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Click the notification icon if that's your thing. Uh, and until next time, take care, and I'll speak to you soon.